There's a couple of ways to time travel. Time travel to the past and time travel to the future. Under our current understanding of the laws of physics, there is nothing preventing you from time traveling to the future. There's a couple of ways you can do that already. You can chill near a black hole's event horizon, or you could get in a spaceship, accelerate, and then come back. But time travel to the past is a much bigger problem. Not only does it seem to be physically impossible, it's even hard to make it logically possible. But even if it's physically and logically possible, you shouldn't do it because the very attempt would very likely kill you. Before we talk about the logical problems with time travel to the past, let's talk about the physical ways to actually time travel to the past. There's actually a couple of hypothetical ways to do that. One way is to use uh, what's called exotic matter to construct a time machine, which is kind of like making a wormhole into the past, something like that. Uh, the other way that physics allows is that there might be objects that are always traveling back in time. Um, they're called tachyons. And whilst that means you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to go back in time, you could maybe figure out a way to um, capture tachyons and send signals back in the past, which would be just as exciting. You know, it's, it's just as good to get the lottery numbers via radio than go back and buy a ticket. Like, it would have the same effect. So Professor Nick Effingham wrote this book, which I use uh, as the main point of discussion in this video. So while, yes, there are a couple of ways to time travel to the past physically, those ways are basically the result of messing with physics equations. Exotic matter is needed to stabilize wormholes so that as you pass through them, they don't collapse on you and then you end up not time traveling to the past. The thing is with exotic matter though is that it's exotic. It has negative mass, which is an absolutely crazy idea in physics. As for tachyons, they are basically reverse massive particles. They always travel faster than light. And the weird thing about them is that the less energy they have, the faster than light they travel. Exotic matter and tachyons have never been observed and will likely never be observed. They're very fringe. They go against the way our universe works. But even if there was a way to physically time travel to the past, you shouldn't do it because it would be a very bad idea. There's all sorts of logical problems with it. And to understand why, you're going to need a rifle, a time machine, and to apologize in advance to your pappy. Let's talk about the grandfather paradox. So the most basic version of the paradox is that you time travel to the past before the point where your granddad met your grandma. And then you shoot your shot and because of that, your dad wouldn't be born and then you wouldn't be born to time travel to the past to shoot your granddad. So you conclude in this case that it's logically impossible to time travel to the past. Now, you might be saying, you know, what about you know, grandma, I can, I can do that to grandma instead of granddad, or you, maybe you don't have enough time travel fuel, so you shoot your dad instead. It's got nothing to do whatsoever with grandfather murder in particular, because we could do anything. We could do, um, so I, I currently, I had a cup of coffee earlier today. Could I go back in time and swap that coffee out for a, a Coke or a cup of tea? And that is just as impossible. So as I'm there, like trying to put a cup of tea in place, it looks as if that's impossible because I definitely had coffee. I had coffee. So I can't, you can't now make it this. I had a cup of tea. The grandfather paradox is just a way to show the logical problems that would arise if someone were to try and time travel to the past. Now, there are ways around this paradox. And the easiest way is that when you time travel to the past, you've actually split the universe. You're traveling to a different timeline. Some physicists do believe that that's what would happen if you had a time machine. That would be a theory whereby you could change the past because you, you'd arrive in another universe and you'd shoot, I'd shoot my grandfather and that guy would die, but it'd be my grandfather in a different universe. He'd still be alive and well in the original one. Um, and he, in the original one, he did meet my grandmother who gave birth to my mother who gave birth to them. And there you go. No more problems. You've solved the grandfather paradox. 
Well, actually, there's a couple of problems with that. One of them is that technically, you're not actually traveling to your own universe. It's a different universe that looks like yours. And the guy that you're shooting isn't actually your granddad. It's just some other guy who looks exactly like him. The other problem is that the universe doesn't exactly know that you exist. It doesn't really care about you. It cares about the fundamental particles that you're made of and how they interact with each other. So if you time travel to the past and that kind of time travel would split the universe, this could possibly mean that every fundamental particle that you're made of gets sent to a different universe, a different timeline. In the universe's case, it looks as if any attempt to time travel will cut you into an infinite number of different slices, with each slice ending up at a different universe. So when you, when you step through your portal into the past, your magic wormhole that takes you into the past or what have you, um, the first bit of you goes to one universe, the next bit of you will go to another universe and so on and so forth. And you'll just be distributed across an infinite number of universes. And that's in the easy, basic version of the grandfather paradox. The hard version is that you time travel as your actual self in your own universe in the same timeline and shoot your actual granddad. But even getting to that point is very difficult because, again, the universe sees fundamental particles. So if you time travel to the past, the mere act of one of your electrons changing orbitals as soon as you step out of that time machine, that's enough to change the past permanently. The grandfather paradox is, is kind of a problem mainly for people who believe that you can't change, you can't change time. That were you to go back into the past, time would be consistent. What's called in, in philosophy, it gets sometimes called a Ludovician theory after David Lewis, who didn't come up with the idea, but famously defended it. So uh, philosophers in this Ludovician theory where you can't change the past, any attempt to change the past will fail because if, you know, Assuming that you don't won't succeed, something has to stop you. So, so something will stop you. These uh, sometimes get called banana peels because the idea is that uh, I go back to the past to kill Pappy. I, I'm about to shoot him, and then I slip on a banana peel at the last minute, and the gun fires, and I miss him. The Ludovician view of time travel is that there is this built-in mechanism in our reality that would prevent the past from changing so even if you could time travel to the past something will stop you from changing the past whether that's a banana peel a heart attack the, the tva something like that but here's the thing nothing actually has to police the timeline professor nick uses this example let's say you have 10 squares and i ask you to build a bigger square out of those squares you can try and do that, but every time you try, you will fail. In the same sense, every time you try and time travel to the past will fail because of the nature of the problem. It's just mathematically and physically impossible. What I do differently is arguing that this means that no time travel will ever take place. Whereas normally the Ludovician just says, well, look, if, if you time travel back, the, these weird banana peels will start happening to you. Um, what I argued in my book is that there's no reason why the banana peels shouldn't take place before you get in the time machine. So you're thinking about going back in time to kill Pappy and you start constructing a time machine and something gets in the way of you killing Pappy in the past because you don't even get down to finishing making the time machine. So you don't even have to go all the way back to the past to slip on the banana peel. You just have a heart attack. Something will stop me even making the time machine in the first place. And we should think that this is more likely than me managing to go back in the past in the first place. Thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to know more, I've linked to a talk by Professor Nick Effingham that goes into much more detail. And if you'd like to go into much, much more detail and you have a philosophy background, do check out the uh, book as well.